Hello and welcome everyone to the iBug Buzz episode number 590 on Monday, May 26, 2023. My name is Marie and I'm going to be facilitating the call today along with our own ladybug, Sandia Rao. This call is all about iOS and that includes iPhones, iPads, iPod Touch, Apple Watch and Apple TV, as well as the devices that we use with this, such as headphones, Bluetooth keyboards, et cetera, and also any of the apps that are used on these devices. The main purpose of this call is to help and hopefully get people more competent and comfortable with using the accessibility features offered by Apple. So before we get into the question and answer and introductions, I'm going to turn it over to Sandia so that she can give you the announcements and the current events upcoming. Sandia, your turn. Yes, thank you very much, Marie. We have a busy week ahead. Uh, lots of stuff going on for the next two hours. We're going to be talking about the iPhone, like Marie said, and all the peripherals and good stuff. At the midpoint, we will have the big reveal for our movie. Yes, and then, and then, we'll get ready for those clues, all right? And then on Tuesday, we have two events. We have the mini buzz, I bug mini buzz on Clubhouse. And then we'll have the Mac and talk. So the mini, bu the mini bus is from five to six on Clubhouse and all times are central and everything is on Zoom unless specified otherwise. Then, like I said, Mac and talk at 7 p.m. back here on the Zoom conference line. So come with your questions about the Mac. And, you know, even if you don't have a Mac, if you're wondering whether you should get one or maybe you have one, don't know what to do with it, that's where you come. Then, then, then we're off on Wednesday and Thursday. Nice. And then Friday, it's I bug not at the virtual movies and we'll be, uh, that's what we'll be revealing in a little bit. So five, uh, seven, seven thirty is the social time where we have name that tune and all kinds of silliness. And then at eight o'clock is the movie. Then we'll have discussion and trivia to follow. Then we are off on the weekend, and one quick note, we will be off next Monday. Next Monday, 4th of July weekend, we will be off. We are actually going to be, you know, all over <laughs> getting ready with the national conventions in Houston and in Schaumburg. So uh, we are so grateful to all of our team that's helping out. So uh, we hope that you enjoy the 4th of July Independence Holiday and then we will still have a movie next Friday. You just won't have the lovely clues to go with it. So we still have a movie. And then another note to remember, uh, we will have the cafe. iBug Cafe will be July 9th, July 9th. And we're talking about artificial intelligence. Lots of hype about that. And we're definitely going to explore that in greater detail. So that should be really cool. Okay, quickly, social media is ibugtoday.org is our website, Twitter, Facebook, we have it all, so check them out, and then all of our uh, training sessions are listed, are available on YouTube, they're available on our website, and they're available on your favorite podcasting app. And finally, like I just said, we're going to be at the convention. So if you're planning to attend either one of them, we hope that you will come by, come by our table or come to our reception that we're having at both events. All right. With that, Marie, handing it back to you. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. At this point, before we start our Q&A, we'd like to have you announce, uh, speak your name and tell us where you're from and let us know if you're a new participant. So you can unmute and, and introduce yourselves. Uh, my name is Raheel Ahmed and I am from Latham, New York. And I look forward to being at the reception and at the appreciation dinner. Okay, I... thank you. Hi, Julie. This is Dot from Hi, Dot. Southern California. This is Herbie in Marysville, Washington. Hello, Mr. Allen. This is Gloria Houston. Is that Gloria? Yes, it is. Welcome. Thank you. 
Is Karen in Philly? Hi, Karen. Gary in Austin. Hello, Gary. Angelo Earl in Toronto. Uh, there was Angelo, and who was the other one? Earl in Toronto. Haven't been here in a while, Earl. but I have been here before. Okay, well, welcome back. Vincent in New Jersey. Hi, Vincent. Mark in Montreal, down the road from Earl, about <laughs> five hours, six hour trip. Oh, hi, Mark. Hi. And I've Pat. been here many times. Yeah. Pat from Ohio. Hello, Pat. Hi. Judy in Connecticut. Hi, Judy. Hi, guys. Roy Dan from Texas. Southern California. Welcome, Roy. And who was that other? This is Dan from Southern California. Hi, Dan. David from Arkansas. Welcome, David. This is Brad Dallas. Looking forward to being in Houston next week. <laughs> Hi, Brad. Liz, Fort Worth. Hello, Liz. That's my hometown. Hot today. Who else do we have? This Greg in Texas. Hi, Greg. Yeah, I'm Tram from Minnesota, but now I'm in California for visiting. Yeah, I'm a new member here. Okay, Hi, everybody. Welcome, welcome Tram. Yeah. yeah. She's so oh, new. From Seattle. Mm -hmm. Who from Seattle? Shay. Welcome, Shay. Thank you. Sonia from Houston. Hello, Sandia. Jody from New Hampshire. Hello, Jody. Hello. Anybody else? Sarah from Vermont. Hi, Sarah. What, what dumb Hi. Like that? My neighbor. Was there somebody else that said hello? Okay, Tram, could you tell us how you heard about iBug and what Apple devices you're using since you're a new participant? Yeah, thank you for your asking. So, I uh, that's who's introduced iBug to me because he knows that I'm really interested in technology and I'm using iPhone. Okay, well, we welcome you to iBug. I hope you'll yeah, come thank back you. and be a regular participant. Okay, sure. is there anybody else that needs wants to introduce themselves? Okay, Monique if not, from Fresno, California. Oh, I'm sorry. What was your name? Monique from Fresno, Monique. California. I understand you haven't been here for a while, so welcome back, Monique. Okay, before we start the uh, Rosetta, Rosetta from oh, Georgia. Rosetta. <laughs> Hi. Okay. Any other latecomers? <laughs> I don't want to miss anybody. <laughs> okay. So, okay, who wants to be first? Everybody wants to be first, right? This is Dot. Go ahead, Dot. Okay, I'm, um, so I go, I use, uh, like every, everyone else, I use Braille screen input a lot. And uh, mm -hmm. sometimes during my typing, I would hit a, uh, a menu where you know, they have word selection, but I don't know what to do with them. Like, I never know how, what to do with the, you know, word prediction uh, for Braille screen input. What, what, do, what should I do to select that word during my typing? Uh, thank you. This is okay. Herbie. Go ahead, Herbie. So when I started use, using Braille screen input, I found that having autocorrect turned off really made life a lot easier for me. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I turn off all the autocorrect and predictive text. I, for, I forget which one. I know you can turn off autocorrect and all that. And then what I will do is after I'm done typing, I will go to the misspelled rotor and check on misspellings and stuff that way. And of course, just you can use the words rotor and characters rotor to reread read everything. So I just find that a whole lot easier than the uh, autocorrect. So that's what I would recommend is disable that. And uh, how do you disable the autocorrect? Please. So this is Herbie. Raheel. Go ahead, Herbie. So it is in settings, and then you'll find most of that under keyboard. Oh, okay. Okay, Rahil? Uh, I was going to say the same thing. Um, another thing about Braille screen input is that 
it's recommended that you put it in screen away mode and lock the orientation by swiping with three fingers and that should help out too. And this is that, uh, that's okay. what I have. That's what I have, um, screen away mode and then lock orientation. Okay, okay. Then... thank you. Do we have another question? Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, next question. Pat. Go ahead, Pat. Um, periodically, I am still having problems where voiceover stops talking and, you know, at least once a week, I have to shut down my phone for a few minutes to get it reset. Does anybody know if Apple is working on fixing that? Anybody have an answer for that besides the great apple in the sky? I, I have yeah. a feeling that's not a question we're going to get an answer to. Does somebody okay. have an answer there or a yeah. comment? I, Go ahead, this Gary. This is Sarah. Oh, Gary first, and then Sarah. Yeah, I just I've had that happen where voiceover just goes away and. I uh, sometimes I can get the uh, triple click home to start. Sometimes I can make it scary to restart it, but uh, I don't think I've had to restart my phone. Uh, I did have a weird issue when I go from here, but the speaker where the voiceover sounds really alien, you might say, and uh, then I have to restart my phone then, but. Just to go away, I don't generally in the past weeks haven't had to restart it. Uh, I have to sometimes get theory to restart voiceover because none of the other shortcuts seem to work. Okay, Sarah. Yeah, um, I I find I, I do not turn off my phone, but I find that sometimes if you push the power button um, or home button um, once just to take just to um, take it out of whatever mode it was in um and if that doesn't work i'll get out of the app that i was in where it froze and it's just like it's freezing and so once i get out of that app and open the app again often it will come back okay um, thank you anybody else have a comment or, or resolution Okay, if not, we need a new question. This is David. Go ahead, David. Uh, I was just wondering how to uh, attach uh, pictures to, I guess, emails or whatever. I mean, uh, yeah, pictures. Okay. Or to take a picture and send it as an email. Okay, who has a resolution for that one? So you want to either attach it to an email or, or send it from the picture itself and create an email? Yeah, I, I'd like to know those things and maybe copy and paste pictures. Can they, can you do that to also? Pat. Go ahead, Pat. Um, if you have taken a photo in the photo app, there is a share button at the bottom and you can select email and send it. And that's pretty easy to do. You can send it multiple different ways, email or text. If you're sending a text and you take the photo while you're in the text message app, you can share it there as well, and it would just share it, you know, to whoever you're. T I'll open on on the text, or you can do a group text. It's my understanding that you cannot copy and paste a picture into it, like an email or anything. Okay. This is Jody. Go ahead, Jody. Another another thing you can do, rather than trying to find the photos, the photo in your album, if you've just taken the picture and you want to send it right away, 
uh, you take the picture and then in the lower left hand corner there's the photo and video viewer it's a little um, button or whatever in the lower left hand corner in the camera mode in the camera app and when you tap that it will bring up the picture that you just took and then you can go to the share at the bottom uh, to share the picture and then that way you don't have to go searching for the photo in your albums how do you know which picture you really have? Uh, well, the, the picture labeled. that you just the, the picture that you just took is the one that's going to come up. That's why it's so handy to do it right from the camera. So rather than going into the photos, if you just you know if you take the picture, uh, then you go to the the uh, photo and video video viewer in the lower left hand corner of the camera app, and that will bring up the picture that you just took a picture of, and then you can share it from there, and then you don't have to go searching for the photo. Although, you know, it's the if you go to your album, it uh, voiceover has gotten very good at describing what's the content of your picture. I mean, I can take a picture of the, my dog in the backyard and it will say, you know, dog with a fence and green grass. I mean, the, the descriptions are really, really good. But to me, the, the quickest way is just right from the camera app is go to the photo and video viewer in the lower left hand corner. This is Dot. Okay, Dot. Um, Another way to tell that the photo is uh, most recent is the time information that available um, during the voiceover description of the photo. It will tell you the time like two minutes ago, that means it's very new or 30 seconds ago, you know, stuff like that. And you can, that's to, you can, you can really tell that's the newest picture or photo. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so that's pretty easy. And then you can uh, select share and, and uh, all that. Okay, thanks for those comments. Move on to a new question. This is Helene. We're on a, we're on a pretty good roll here today. Go ahead, Helene. Uh, the, uh, the shortcuts, I tried to do a complicated thing with um, having the, sh putting in, um, instead of having to type in my email uh, when I want to register for something, I was made a shortcut just putting HM, like for Helene's mail. And the interesting thing is that it would not take, it won't do it because it's, how do I explain it? You have to put HM and then a space. And that's the way whoever developed these shortcuts. And whenever I press space bar, it won't say space. And I worked on this for like an hour and tried it with a Logitech key keyboard and my key, you know, my, the other one, my, um, I, I just, I, it's, it freaks me out that why wouldn't it work? But then uh, someone said that, well, it doesn't work because space in an email address doesn't really so I just don't understand if uh, how how can I is there a, is there a go a workaround um, to, to do that excuse, excuse me Elaine is that a shortcut or is that on text it's a, it's a shortcut it's a tech oh it's a text replacement uh -huh. <clears throat> okay it may depend on what app mm -hmm. you're in you're putting the the email in because I use it in a lot of different places, and most of the time it does accept the space. So it may depend on the app you're in at the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. So the app is an audiovault.net. Mm. Hmm. Well, you might just have to type in for that one. Does anyone else have a, a separate, another idea about that? This is David. Go ahead, David. Yeah, I've run into that too, where sometimes the text replacement will stand out even if you fit space or you know it just doesn't work uh in certain forms or but yeah you, you normally do have to type that space to get it to change it to the replacement thing mm -hmm. you just type in hm and that's it it's never going to expand but, no and again if you do the space there are some apps or websites that do not let you use that shortcut um, or a text replacement Right. Okay. This is Herbie. Yes, Herbie, go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say um, the this is whatever. It's definitely a good idea to have multiple tools in the toolbox because 
sometimes there are certain situations where shortcuts will not work and um, Audio Vault must do something to code their site in a way that does not allow it for work. I'll have to try it on there. Right. Um, but that's a tricky site to use on the phone in general anyway. So right. thank you. Anybody else have any ideas on that one? Okay. Let's uh, hello, this well, is we're getting some great questions today. Go ahead. Hello. Yes. Um, yeah, I was going to say, um, in general, like, I mean, even if you, uh, you can type in the HM and hit the space, and then sometimes what I've had to do is it'll expand it, and then I'll backspace and get rid of that space, and then until I get to the M of, you know, gmail.com or whatever, and then sometimes I'll have to type the M again, but at least I haven't had to type the whole email address, but, you know, that works sometimes, so. It's another mm. workaround. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Any other comments? Okay. New question. Rahil. Go ahead, Rahil. Um, number one is I got the chest harness for my phone to be uh, hands free, um, especially when I'm going to be out in the community like a lot at the Hilton or a lot at the at airports using Ira. But anyway, um, how can I, uh, do I have to grab like three, four bins, like one for my bag, one for my earpiece and one for my phone and chest harness or how would that work? And do I have to take my phone out of the chest harness and does it have to come off at TSA? Okay, who has an answer for that? Somebody who does some traveling, and that's not me anymore. <laughs> David? Go ahead, David. Well, it really depends. There's really no uh, standardization on TSA because I've been to airports where they wanted me to take my say my iPad out of my bag and put it in a, in a uh, bin, and sometimes they say, no, leave everything in, in your bag. And sometimes they want you know, every little piece of thing in a separate bin, and sometimes they'll let you put everything in one bin. It kind of just depends. You have to I just ask them and hopefully they'll be polite to you. But don't expect it. Thank you. Thanks, David. Okay, next question. This is Jody. Go ahead, Jody. Yes, I would like to beta test the OpenScape app, which is the replacement app for Soundscape. And I got the test flight app, which is what you use when you want to do beta testing. And it says you need an invitation in order to, uh, you need a code in order to, um, to use, you know, to, to, to get into the beta things. And I wonder what was the step for that? I know somebody had talked about it last week and I wondered how do you uh, get an invitation to beta test an app? Who's got an answer for that one? This is Brad. Go ahead, Brad. My understanding is, I don't necessarily know that you have to have an invitation, but they open it up. They let a few testers in. Like about a week ago, there was an email that said they'd, I saw it actually on David Goldberg. So any, anyway, and I, um, by the time I saw the email, I did like you, Jody, open up the test flight, which I've already had on my phone. And I searched for Soundscape in test flight. And of course it said it was closed. So if it's open, you should be able to download it. If, okay. if it's not, you can't. Well, this is Jody. I never got, I never got past the invitation page. So I'm, I'm not you know, sure where to go. But I, I'll, I'll just wait because I think it's going to be coming out this month anyway. So I'm just going to wait until they come out close. at this point. But I would just keep looking. Like I said, I'm not aware of an invitation page. I just went to it and searched for the app and it said, we're sorry, the the beta is closed. It said something like that. It's closed to new users right now. Okay. Keep checking back. How do you like it? 
I don't have it. I've never been able to get it. Oh, you didn't get into it. Okay. He didn't get in. No, I've never gotten in. I've looked <laughs> okay. several right. times well, and I forget. You. I mean, I suppose I could look every day, twice a day. Maybe I'll get in, but I just haven't done anything like that. Oh, this is Jody. Go ahead, Jody. I, I'm assuming that they're probably going to release it during the convention. You never know. No, you don't. Yeah, you know, but I, I just, if, if they're going to, you know, if they said they're going to release it in July, I thought, well, that, that would be perfect timing. This is Greg. Go ahead, Greg. Yeah, I, I think I brought that up last week and I, I, I guess I just got lucky because I, uh, I saw it on a podcast episode and clicked on it real quick, but yeah, I think you just have to keep trying. I've, I've used it a little bit and uh, I, it, you know, it seems like it works pretty much like the soundscape worked. Oh, so, good. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah, I was just really... going to see if any, I was just, just going to ask if anybody had used the beta or knew somebody who had. So good. Yeah. Yeah. I set up a, I, go ahead. Or, yeah. Sorry, who Greg. Was, who was that? Earl? I think Earl. Okay. Go ahead. I was just going to say, I did join the OpenScape beta last week. I almost said Soundscape, but OpenScape beta last week. I was lucky enough to see it on Mastodon, and I did get in. And it is a lot like the old Soundscape, and I, it's it's getting better. Um, I I think there's going to be a new update coming out um, for beta testers, and I think they're opening it up to more testers. That's what they were saying on Discord. I don't know when they will be, but um, so if you see it, you know, try to get it as quick as you can because they are opening up more spots. At least that's what they were saying on Discord. So, you know, we'll just have to kind of wait for that to happen. All right. This is Greg. Go ahead, Greg. Yeah, I, I set up a, a uh, route, you know, with with uh, uh, markers along the way and uh, and then retrace the route and it worked like a champ. Good news. This is Jody again. Okay, Jody, and then we need to move on. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. Well, I know Soundscape is going to be uh, supported through August. They said, can you run Soundscape and OpenScape at the same time? Not at the same time, but can you have them both on your phone at the same? Time? This is Earl. Go ahead, Earl. I have them both on my device, and like you said, you wouldn't run them at the same time, but I do have them both, and I I use them interchangeably, so I can stop one and then use the other one and then you know go back to the other one and i do do that just to compare my results just to see you know what one does over the other one and stuff so um yes the the short answer is yes you can have both on the same okay, device thank you. okay all right jody good question okay what's our next question this is greg go ahead greg so i have an issue uh I'm, I'm finding that uh, maybe every other day or so, I'll if if I just touch my phone screen, it will uh, turn uh, uh, simulate the three finger double tap, turning voiceover speech off, and I I can't figure I don't know if that's a bug, but I'm literally just touching my screen and I'll get the message that uh, speech has been turned off. Is anybody else experiencing that? This is Helene. Go ahead, Helene. Yes, I've been having that problem. And I've gotten really good at doing those triple finger double tap. <laughs> Turn it back on. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. Anybody else have a comment or have that issue? Yeah, this I will is say, Greg, I have accidentally reached in my pocket to get my phone. And I think I maybe swipe my finger a little bit or something. I'm certainly not doing a three finger double tap, but I've had voiceover go off and or speech go off yeah. like that. I'm sorry, yeah. Brad, go ahead. I did the 16.5.1 update with Wednesday. And I will say, I don't know if it's my imagination, but the thing seems more sensitive than it used to. I've had a number of errant uh, things happen that seemed like, you know, I, I barely touched it and it did something that I didn't, you know, intend for it to do. So there could be something in that update that did it. Okay. 
Next question. Liz. Go ahead, Liz. Okay. My question eventually will be, can I answer the phone or have Siri answer the phone for me? Because the other day I had, I was listening to a book and I had a um, recipe on my screen and I was cooking dinner and my hands were messy and I got a phone call and I could not answer the call. So can I holler at Siri to do that? Somebody got an answer for us regarding Miss Siri or Mr. Siri, depending on what your choice <laughs> is. <laughs> right. I'm trying to think. I think you can I think you can have Siri hang up a call. I'm not sure about that. This no, you Jody. can't have it hang up because you can't use Siri when you're on a call. I'm sorry, who was that? It's Jody. Go ahead, Jody. I don't have H-E-Y-S-I-R-I -I turned on, but I have heard that if you do have that turned on, that you can say answer call and it will work. I, it, it, it's hit or miss, but you could give it a try. This is Liz. Go ahead, Liz. Okay, because I didn't think about trying it until, you know, of course, an hour or two later. So if Siri's turned on, how do I make sure, I mean, I can, holler at my phone and ask, hey, to do it, but do something. But does that mean it is turned on? Uh, well, no, you, it, do you have H-E-Y-S-I-R-I -I turned on so that if you say that, it will, it will, it will answer. Okay, thanks. Okay, if, if you have that feature turned on, then theoretically you should be able to say answer call and it, and it will, it will do it. Okay, because I always have to say hey before it responds to me. Yeah, well, that's what I, I I was trying to avoid saying it, but yeah, if you say it, right. if you say it, hey, S I R I, answer call, then I think it does work. Okay, I have that feature turned off because I think it might affect battery life, but um, you know, you you could give it a try rather than missing the call. This is Chris. Okay, Chris, go ahead. I think there's a setting that you can uh, set that you can have your phone calls automatically answered after like after a certain amount of time or so many, so many rings, but it's going to answer, you know, every call that time. If you that's, do that setting. Well, that's no good. There's some calls I don't want to answer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's why most of us don't use that setting. <laughs> mm -hmm. This is Jody. Hey, Jody. Chris, is that in the in the phone settings? This is Chris. Go ahead, Chris. I don't remember where that is. I know I've seen it somewhere. Um, I don't think it is the phone settings, actually. I think it's something else, but yeah. Yes, I, all right. I, okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. This is Earl. Go ahead, Earl. I think it's under accessibility. I just don't remember exactly where under there. It might be under it might be under audio settings, but I'm not 100% sure, but I know it's definitely in accessibility somewhere where you can have it answer calls automatically. Okay. Okay, another question. If not, I actually have a quick question. I have two phones. And I do not have either one of them set up to do automatic updates because I like to decide when I'm going to update the operating system. However, within the last three days, at night when my phone is on the charger, both phones have updated to 16.5.1. <laughs> Does anybody have a clue I, it's just like a mystery to me because i've not experienced that in the past and i've been using phones since 2011. This, uh, this is, is vincent i'm sorry go ahead vincent uh yeah i had that happen with uh, uh my wife's phone uh and uh it, it updated automatically and also what I noticed, and I don't know if it's my imagination, it seems to be more responsive 
as far as uh, using like Touch ID or other features, uh, but it seems to drain the battery considerably you know, more quickly and with the update than before. Like I said, I don't know if it's my imagination, but whereas before it would last, uh, depending on, on the application that I was using, it would last more than one day. I find out that I have to recharge the phone uh, more uh, during the day. Okay. And, and I believe somebody else had a comment and I didn't catch your name. It's Brad. Oh, Brad. Yeah, with regard to your automatic update thing, you know, it's funny you mentioned that because I don't have mine set to automatically update either. But the other day after the 16.5.1 update came out, I went to go do it and saw that my uh, automatic updates had been turned on. So oh. don't know when it happened. Don't know how it happened. It may have happened during 16.5. I don't know where you were before yours did the update. If you were I was at 16.5. It may be something in that update that did it. Turned so. it on. Because both both phones, both phones updated on their own, and I did not instigate yep. that update. That could be it. Okay, I'll double check that. Thanks, Fred. Okay, do we have any more? How, how are we doing for time, Sandia? This is Herbie. Go ahead, Herbie. I wonder, too, like... Um, it is, I mean, it was passed on, like, Apple could have just decided that your current update was a security request or needed to update um, your phone. So I wonder if Apple, you know, could have done something on that. I don't know for sure, but that was just a theory. Is there yeah. something wrong with your sound? Yeah. Um, you sound kind of muffled. Okay, do we have any more questions? This is Dan. Go ahead, Dan. I have a question for you, Marie. Uh, I'm just really curious. Okay, when you did that, when it did that update, even though you didn't want it to do it, did it also install or just? Yes. Use it oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It, it updated, it installed and everything. And I got that screen, you know, that you get where it's saying hello and swipe up to begin. And just like it just says your phone has been updated. Wow, that's so, interesting. Huh. Yeah. All right. So, this is so Sarah. Go ahead, okay, Sarah. Go ahead. Oh, were, were you finished talking? <laughs> Sorry. Um, um well, uh, we'll uh, go ahead. We'll let Sarah go real quick. Real okay, quick. and then okay. we'll get we'll well, come back to you. Okay. Okay. I just wanted to say that I have my phone set um to automatically update and it never does ever like not once <laughs> and for the first time you know with this latest update for the first time it automatically updated but that's you know like <laughs> it, it, first it's time hard. it's it's starting to sound like this update is going to install whether you want it or not it's <laughs> like okay go back Was that i Dan? guess <laughs> It, it fixed something for me and ruined everything for all of you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, back is that what back to Dan? Was that Dan? Yeah, yeah this is Dan. Right. Go that's ahead. why I'm that's why I'm waiting. All these focus these voiceover focus issues really, really bother me. But uh when you okay, after after it installed and it told you to swipe up um uh, uh, how did you, did you just swipe up once or with one finger? I just, just swiped up just like you do from the lock screen. And then it asks you, you know, to enter a passcode. And then if you want two-factor authentication, and, and then it just goes right on and back to normal and goes right on to your, to your regular screen. Just like every, that's what all my updates do now. Oh, okay. It'll, it'll say hello in several different languages. And then it, if you keep, if you keep waiting and you just swipe up from the bottom, just like you were unlocking the screen. And uh, then it, it tells you that, you know, ask you for put in a, enter your passcode or, or set up one, whichever. Okay. And after you enter your passcode, does it automatically uh, uh, bring up voice, voiceover? 
uh, then it asks you about the two-factor authentication, and and then uh, you can do that or not, and whichever you decide. Then yeah, voiceover will be on. Everything's on. It's just right back to your normal operations. Well, okay, so. thank you. Okay, next question. We're on a pretty good roll here. Pat. Okay, Pat, go ahead. I really don't have a question, but I have a comment. Anyone that is going to be at the Hotel Americas in Houston, they have an app called Good Maps Explorer that they have mapped out Hotel Americas. So you might want to download that app app before you go and it will direct you around the hotel all right thanks pat it's good information for anybody <laughs> going to be attending the convention okay new question this is shay there was noise in the background here at my house could you tell me again what the name of that app is good, good maps good explorer thank you very much Brad. Okay, Brad. <clears throat> I have actually used that app. There are two, there are two Good Maps Explorer apps. So beware. One of them is Good Maps Explorer, and I believe the other one is called Indoor. Explorer. Indoor, yeah. And actually, when you download on your phone, it just says Explorer because it will do both indoor and outdoor. And I have used it for the past couple of years uh, at CESA. They mapped the uh, Anaheim Marriott, and it's pretty neat. Um, you can use it to find the front desk in the hotel, an elevator, the host stand for the restaurant, um, restrooms in the convention area. Um, it seemed to work better a year ago than it did this last year. Um, I'm not sure why. Updates to the app. I don't know how it gets its uh, locations. Actually, it uses its camera and it sees where you are. And the camera on your iPhone, it sees where you are. And it, you open it up, you tell it where you want to go. And you start, as you start walking, it figures out where you are because it sees out, out your camera. Anyway, it's pretty amazing app. So I am looking forward to trying it at the Hilton of the Americas in Houston. I know that I believe they mapped wherever the in the name of the hotel where the NFB was last year in New Orleans, uh, which I did not go to. But uh, it's a neat app. So yeah, download it in advance. It's free. It's from Numa Solutions. No, it's not. It's um, Mike May. It's in it's through um, what used to be Sendero and they have partnered with um, um, APH. <clears throat> and so it's a pretty neat app. Definitely. If you're going to be there, get it and be ready to check it out. This is Sarah. Go ahead, Sarah. Um, um, I think the other one is Good Maps Outdoors and the Explorer is the indoors one. Um, because whenever I've tried to turn on the one for outdoors um, and the indoors one has to be mapped out by them. You know, the outdoors right. one is just, you can use by yourself and it doesn't, you know, nothing has to be set up. Um, but I have, it, it, Siri will not open up Good Maps outdoors. Um, you have to find it. <laughs> I, I've tried, you know, every time I want to open it, it always opens up the Explorer. Um, the, I, I don't know if anybody else has that um, happen. <clears throat> okay, do we have a new question? Rahil? Go ahead, Rahil. So with the Maps Explorer, um, how do you put in where you want to go, like to the ballroom of the Americas or the ballroom, uh, Lanier, Lanier, Lanier Grand Ballroom or the... Um, front desk or Starbucks of the hotel. Do you have to put in each destination into that or, and also would it still work if I'm hands-free with the, with my um, 
phone in the harness in the mount. Pat. Brad. Go ahead, Pat. And then Brad. I listen to NFB does a tech boutique a week or so ago, and they were using it around the Jernigan Institute. And I believe he <clears throat> put in the name of a conference room and it actually guided him there. It told him how many steps to go forward. You'll find a corridor on the left, turn left and go down there and make another left, make a right, make a left. It was right on the money. And at one time he did say <clears throat> something about is there a restroom around here? And he scanned his camera around and, you know, it did find the restroom. So I think you have to put in where in the hotel you want to go. Okay, and they oh. did say to hold the camera out in front of you. So I don't know if it'll work with a harness or not. Okay, Brad. Yeah, um, in the app, there is, and I can't remember the exact name of it. I'm always bad about that. But if you navigate around when you're using it, there's a listing of places. And, um, you know, it shows you like all these different things, um, you know, elevators for one tower, elevators for the other tower, whatever they were called in Anaheim. Um, well, you know, you could go look for the uh, ballrooms where the, this ballroom, that ballroom, where meeting rooms were uh, in the convention area. There's what they, you know, one restroom had a name. It was named uh, for the ballroom. It was near men's room, you know, women's room. Mm -hmm. um, you can type, there is a search thing. And as long as what you're looking for is on that list, it won't just find some random place that they haven't um, specifically tagged. And of course, <clears throat> it didn't do the, the floors where the rooms are. It did the main floor, uh, the restaurant, the bar area, the front desk, the concierge uh, podium, the uh, little market, the Starbucks, things like that, and the convention area. But once you got off the main floor, they weren't there. Um, I don't see any reason why it wouldn't work in a harness. If you're holding it, <clears throat> you know, and a harness that's on your chest, as long as the camera is not obstructed and can see and have a clear view, you know, it doesn't have your jacket in front of it. Of course, you know, it's summertime, but oh, people do wear sweaters and tanks because I promise you this hotel will be like a refrigerator. Mm -hmm. So, um, but yeah, as long right. as it's unobstructed, it should work. Now, you are going to want to sometimes it will ask you to turn it side to side. That would be a problem if it's in a harness. I would recommend holding it in your hand, actually. But it does pretty well. You'll be walking. It'll tell you, be ready to turn left in 60 feet. And it'll count down. Be ready to turn left in 30 feet, 20, 10 feet. Now turn left. You do it. And um, it's got you lined up in the middle of a big, wide hallway, like in the exhibit area, then where it told me to turn right when it's time to turn right for the restroom. I'm walking, and it doesn't tell you you're there, but the restroom is one of those where you go through a doorway, you walk down a little hallway, and then you turn right into the restroom, and I, I walked, and all of a sudden, I just said, where am I, and it had taken me through a four-foot-wide doorway with no door, just a door frame, dead center, so the, even my elbows didn't bump the edges of the door frame. It was amazingly <laughs> spot on accurate. So like I said, I'm looking forward to trying it out in Houston. Pat, I, I would think you would not be able to use it hands free if you're going to have to search for things and stuff. That would be the problem with using it in the harness. Go ahead, Pat. Um, they did say it should be up and operating by the 27th. So if anybody's going early, it should be up and running on the 27th. Okay. All right. We need to move on to a new subject now. So do we have a new question? This is Jody with a comment. Go ahead. And then we'll move on. I was on. just gonna I was just I was you know, I was just gonna say I, I would be very hesitant to hold my phone in my hand or have it uh, in a harness 
like on the on a dog harness, I would I'd keep a, a phone in a lanyard around my neck because it'd be very easy for somebody just to snatch it out of your hand. Maybe not in the convention, but if you're outside. I know somebody that had their phone taken right out of their hand and out, you know, when they were just holding yeah, that, their phone. That is that is a danger holding it out in front of yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah, it's okay. almost like here you go, come get it, you know. <laughs> So I definitely wear it in a lanyard or something. Okay. Pat, Another question. We're starting to run. Yeah, close. Pat. Is this a I, new subject? Is this yes, a new subject? Okay. I would like to know where do you get a lanyard for your phone? Amazon. <laughs> do you, any recommendations on a this is a Jody. One? Go ahead, Jody. Amazon. Amazon. You can buy everything on Amazon. I was asking yeah, just, just, for just a look recommendation. For an iPhone, just ask for an iPhone lanyard. I don't know about. Just go in there and look and see what they've got. I don't know the brands. Any particular brand? This Dan, is Helen. Dan. Dan, and then and then who was that? Helene. Helene. The, the, right, Dan, uh, and then Helene. Yeah, there's a guy. Uh, check out Guidelines and Gadgets. Guidelines and Gadgets. Very sure. He's really big on selling these uh, lanyards and cases and stuff like that okay helene i might have to wait till i get Great to the pat. hold on hold on a second pat audio sub menu Great, helene. my audio um, button group my, the, the, um, my audio the one that group. i don't know i keep hearing talking yeah, somebody. somebody okay but what i use and i love it um it's 30 maybe 31 dollars i think it's called my kids bought it for me it's called the I think it's K E E B O or V O, Kivo or Kibo. And um, it's really lovely and it sits, you know, like you put, you order it for the size phone that whatever you're using. And then you just wear it around your neck. You can make it looser, tighter. And um, I could just feel on my bed when I feel the lanyard, then I know. And it's very soft. You can get them in any color you like. And uh, it's very nice. This and is where, Gary from where do you Vermont. Get those from? Hold on just oh, one second. I'm where sorry, do you get Joe. them from, Helene? Excuse me? Where do you get them from? Oh, I uh, my my kids ordered it, but they said they got it online. So it's probably oh. either Amazon or Kivo or Kivo. Okay. okay. And I'm sorry, who was that? This is Jerry from Vermont. Go ahead, Jerry. I, I noticed the summer special with the AT guys has some kind of a thing called a sling. And apparently what it does is uh, it's like a lanyard, but it's, it, it attaches to your phone um, mm -hmm. and, and it's got releases so that nobody can, can you know, pull it off. It's sling or slinger, I, I can't remember which. And apparently you pull the phone out when you want to use it, uh, you know, not off the thing, but like it's got an extender cord on it. And apparently you pull this thing out, you do what you're going to do with your phone, and then you you just push it back, and it's got a quick release uh, on the 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 gadget, so that uh, you know you can get your your phone on and off of it very quickly. So, uh, just uh, AT guys, you guys know the AT guys. Okay. Yeah. yeah. What is what is AT? AT, the the letters A and T. Oh. oh. AT guys okay. is the name of the business. Great. Michael Babcock and somebody, I think, not the AT guys. You can search for it on Google. <laughs> this is Brad. Go ahead, Brad. I, I, AT this guys Gary will again? be at both conventions. Yeah, and it's uh, I think Larry Larry. You, you need to you need to say your name. Oh, first. sorry, it's Jerry from. Okay, uh, Jerry, go ahead. From Vermont. Sorry. I was just That's responding. Great. I think the AT guys are Larry Gatlin. I don't know who the other, the other gentleman. JJ Meadow. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Sorry. That's okay. We're not. None of us are perfect around here. <laughs> okay, we got about four more minutes. So, who has another question?
Uh, this is Sonia uh, Mirga Boda. How's her hand raised? Just remember, we don't use that. So you can go ahead and say your name and uh, you can be wait to be acknowledged. I'm currently unmuted. Yeah, it, it's Myrna Voda. JJ Meta is the other per person. Oh, yeah. JJ owns a AT guys. And then Michael Babcup is working with them. And I just ordered the, the sling. I don't know what it's like. In fact, I was going to say that before. And then Jerry said it. But um, it looked very appealing to me because I've tried the pouch from Guidelines and Gadgets. Now, the guy from OKO um, is in New York. So he came down and he and I were working on OKO and, and positioning phone, phones because he's he's interested. If you guys, you guys know what OKO is, it's a little mm -hmm. app on the iPhone that you it will tell you in the pedestrian thing, you know, the little stick figure is time to walk and time not to walk and so we were playing with it, Our and I was, I was trying to use um, the the thing, the little pouch from Guide Lights and Gadgets, and then I had another little um, um, lanyard, Brian and it was it was. I wish my computer would shut up, um, and it was um, blocking the bottom camera. So that wasn't good, but I talked to Michael Babcock about the sling, the and he said it won't block the bottom camera. So we'll see what happens when I get it. Okay, thanks, Myrna. Okay, Sandy, we have time for more. Shall we cut it off for now? Uh, you can maybe take one really I quick question. Two minutes. Anybody got a really quick question or a quick comment? This is Dawn from Houston. Go ahead. Uh, I would like to know if you're on Safari or into the body of an email, how do you close tabs? Like it says, every time I open my email, I have seven, eight tabs open. Uh, Rahil? Go ahead, Rahil. Uh, I'll take that. Um, so you go to the, when you're in Safari, you, the new tab is basically on the bottom right of the corner of the phone, on the bottom right of the screen. Like where I'm touching is, it says whiteboard on the bottom, for example. And when there's a tab, uh, you could you could double tap and hold, and then it'll pop up with close all eight tabs. And then once you double tap on that, it'll give you all. It'll give you like a choice to close all eight tabs. Then. All you got to do is double tap and then you're basically on a clean slate. Okay. That should just about wrap it up. We're getting time for the big reveal now. All right. Thank you, Marie. So uh, welcome, everybody. Thank you, Marie, for a busy first half there. And uh, we would like to now give anybody a chance who didn't get to say hello the first time to just say who you are, where you're from, and if you're joining us for the first time. You have to unmute. This is Pete from Florida. Welcome, sir. Arlene, North Carolina. Hey, Miss Arlene. Welcome. Hey, thank you. Okay. Brian from Ontario. Hello, Brian. Uh, Myrna from New York. Welcome, Myrna. Thank you. Kathy from Tulsa. Dawn from Houston. Hey, Kathy and Dawn. Jake from Michigan. Hey, Jake. Hello. Hello. Mo from Texas. Hey, Mo. Shree from Virginia. Hey, Shree. Chris in Texas. Welcome. And Vanessa from Georgia. Hey, welcome. Marty, Philadelphia. Hey, welcome. Okay, well, now we know what time it is. We're all excited. Okay, so um, just uh, try to keep the background noise to a minimum. And we're waiting for our very own iBug guy maybe I don't know iBug guy let's see let's see what's gonna happen
Pellegrini. Okay, yes, oh. yes. Oh, well, I'm is. only going to be here for a moment in the <laughs> iBugosphere. Is that a word? Well, it is now. Uh, I'm actually going to go do some shopping. I need to get a new pair of silk pajamas that I will be showing at the upcoming NFB and ACB convention. So I hope that you will all be yeah, there yeah. for the big reveal. Oh, no. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm going to turn things over to Stephen Michael McCulloch Kerr while I leave the <laughs> iBuggers here and go shopping for those pajamas. Boy. Hey. Oh, well, thank you, Michael. All I can say is, and Sandhya, if you could help me out with this, please do not post any pictures of said room. I really don't think we need to see that, do we? No. It gives a whole new meaning to big reveal, huh? <laughs> yeah, I, there is a different big reveal that I think we are going to do right now. And it has, as sometimes, far as I know, nothing to do with pajamas. And sometimes um, it's good to be blind. I know. Yeah, sometimes it is good to be blind. Very well put. So, yeah, this big reveal is for our Friday night. Uh, I bug at the virtual movies. That's, I think you all knew that. So let's get to it. Now, remember, we need to use the same rules that we do as the rest of the call. No yelling out the answer. You need to say your name first. Wait for me to recognize you and then guess the clue. And you get one guess per clue. You get five clues plus oh, five or ten more, depending on, <laughs> you know, how many of the iBug guy wrote before he left me with all this? Mm -hmm. And may I make a personal disclaimer that absolutely 100% of these clues were not written mm -hmm. by me. Okay. <laughs> so with that out of the way, let's get to clue number one. Our film takes place back east. Our film takes place back east. That's got to be the shortest clue on record, uh -huh. is it not? Hey, um. <laughs> this hmm. dot. Dot, go ahead. What do you think? The Godfather. The Ooh. Godfather. Very back east. good guess, well, but <clears throat> not quite it, Dot, but nice okay. try. Thank you. All right, who's next? Who would like to guess? This is Sarah. Kathy. Sarah, go first, Sarah. East of Eden. Ooh, East of Eden. That's a very good guess. Um, it's probably very, very East of Eden, but uh, not quite <laughs> the right answer. <laughs> All right, Kathy. On Golden Pond? On Golden mm -hmm. Pond. Didn't we not see that did one? Did we see already? that? I don't know. I yeah, we saw that one. Yeah, yeah I thought we did. Sorry. That's a good that was guess. the first but... iBug movie I ever saw. Yeah. I missed it. All right. Any this more is... guesses before we move on this to clue is... number two? This is Jerry from Vermont. Hi, right, Jerry. Go ahead. Is it Cider House Rules? Cider House Rules. Oh, let's see here. No, Jerry, that is not the right answer. Right. It may be within the rules, but it's not the right answer. So mm -hmm. nice this try. Shri, one more, and then we'll go to clue number two. Go ahead, Shri. Uh, True Lies. True Lies is another great guess, but oh, not quite the right answer. <laughs> so let's move on to clue number two. Our, oh my gosh, he's put this word in again. <laughs> Let me, maybe if I sound it out, I can pronounce it. Pro tag. Oh, Nest. Protagonist. That's it, right? Okay. Right. Our protagonist is not on the screen half the time. The movie is about their influence. Our protagonist is not on screen half the time. Well, I wonder where the heck else he could be. But the movie is about <laughs> their influence. This Marie. Marie, go ahead. Prince of Tides. 
Prince of Tides? Oh. oh, gosh, Marie, that is not it, but that's a good guess. Anyone else has a guess? Our protagonist is not on screen half the time. The movie is about their influence. This is Dot. Go ahead, Dot. Jaws. Jaws. I think mm -hmm. Jaws was in that movie quite a bit. Oh, yeah. okay. Just ask the people he ate. <laughs> Good guess, Dot. Good guess, but not yeah, quite the yeah. answer. Good try, though. Jaws. All right. I'm blind. I don't know. Yeah, that's right. You can't see how whether he's on screen or not. <laughs> Neither can the rest of us. All right. Yeah. Any other clues before we move on to clue number three? This is Shree. Go ahead, Shree. A uh, million dollar arm. Million dollar arm. Ooh. No, that is not the right answer. And if I had a million dollar arm, I would <laughs> not demand a salary that I demand from iBug to pay me to do You have a leg up on everybody. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's move on to clue number three. See if we can narrow this thing down a bit further. A tragic affair is foreshadowed early on. But we already know that most romantic flights of fancy inevitably crash land. A tragic affair is foreshadowed early on, but we already know that most romantic flights of fancy inevitably crash land. Anybody have a clue? Oh, okay, I guess from the clue. Sarah's mud. Crickets. Yeah. All right. Shall this we move on? Shree? All right. Shree, what you, what do you think? English Payson. English Payson is patient. Oh, English patient. English patient is not the right answer. Not a bad guess, though. Not a bad guess. Anybody else before we move on to clue number four? This is Liz. Liz, go ahead. One flew over the cuckoo's nest. Ah, one flew over the cuckoo's nest. Nice. That's a good guess, but not quite the right answer, Liz. Good try, though. <coughs> Pat. All right, Pat, what do you think? The Philadelphia story. The Philadelphia story is... <laughs> Wrong again. Good try, though, Pat. All right, let's move on to clue number four. The film returns to familiar themes of the good die young and the old simmer in their neurotic and hateful repressions. <laughs> well, I hope I'm not one of those people. Oh, my word. Oh, my word. Mm. <laughs> the film returns to familiar themes of the good die young and the old simmer in their neurotic and hateful repressions. I thought this is a family show. <laughs> I did too, Doc. <laughs> Where did you get that idea? <laughs> yeah, indeed. Any uh -huh. guesses? Remember my disclaimer. Oh, no guesses. No guesses. No guesses. Well, no guesses. luckily, I have two more clues. Oh, Ooh, help. So let's see what we've clues? got. Clue number five, a self-consciously bohemian group holds secret meetings in the dead of night. A self-consciously bohemian group holds secret meetings in the dead of night. Wow. This is true. <laughs> Didn't we stump them the last time I was here, Sonia? Uh, uh, oh, no, we can't let that happen again. Shree, say this. Um, oh, um, a name called Uncle? Oh, that is a good guess, but not the right answer. Uh, oh. All right. Any more guesses? I've got... 
Fortunately, I've got one more clue, a bonus clue, as it were. So hearing none, here it is. This will give it away. Our <laughs> film is about an inspirational, unconventional English teacher and his students at the best prep school in America, oh, Chris in Marie. Vermont. Dead Poets Society. Oh, Jerry. Uh, oh, go I've got to say your name. I, I, Chris, I yeah. think, was first. Chris, Chris first. Was. Chris was first. Go ahead, Chris. Yeah. Dead, Dead Poets Society. Dead no. Poets Society. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hold on a second. What, what, what was Hold the guess? Dead Poets Society. Let me check. Yeah. Hold on just a second. Yeah. That's it. Oh my gosh, Chris! It is Dead Poet Society. Yeah, that's what ding, I was going to say too. Ding, ding. Yeah, very good. You are a winner, 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 Chris, <laughs> who writes movies of her own, <laughs> is a winner. Congratulations, Chris! It is Dead Poet Society, and that, of course, came out in 1989, starring some. Oh, wow. Fairly well-known names. You made this guy. I think his name is Robin Williams. Oh. Robert Sean mm. Leonard and wow. Ethan Hawke. So, Johnny, movie. what do we have for our winner? All right. <clears throat> well, Chris, you are the lucky owner. Maybe you already have one. Your very own copy of... Walden by Henry David Thoreau. So hopefully you enjoy it thoroughly. Well, you'll crazy. just get a second copy then. I don't understand any of these clues, by the way. <laughs> well, just remember the disclaimer. That's all I've got to say. All right. You did great, Stephen. Thank you very much. Good night, everybody. Until, until we meet again. <laughs> right. Oh, Pleasure, right. Stephen. That's over. I mean, that, that's great. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, yeah. say good night, Stephen. Oh, you already said good night. Okay. All right. Here we go. Okay. And if in case you missed it, it is the Dead Poet. No, it's called Dead Poet Society. And from 1989, and it will be this Friday at 8 p.m. Central Time. Okay, now it's time for our iBug Bite segment with our very own Marie. Marie, are you ready? Go for it. All right. Hi, today I'm going to call our bite session. I'm going to call it a kilobyte because it's short and simple. There comes times, occasionally for some of us, when we may have two different phones or we may be going somewhere where there's no cell service or for different reasons, we may want to forward calls from one device to another device. In my case, I have two phones with different phone numbers. But you might have a work phone and a personal phone. And we're going to use that as our example. You're going out to dinner. You don't want to carry both phones. But you know you might get an important work phone call. So just in case, you're going to forward your calls to your personal phone. So on your work phone, open the phone app, go to the keypad, and dial star 72, followed by the phone number, of the device you want to forward your calls to. Once that is done and you check for accuracy, go down to the call button and double tap with one finger. At the time you will hear a tone and then it will tell you your calls are being forwarded to and it will repeat the phone number where your calls are going. Listen carefully, make sure it's the correct call and if that's correct, then you can set your work phone aside and take your first personal phone along with you and be assured that you can get calls for both devices on that one phone. At the end of the evening, when you want to transfer your calls back to your work phone, you once again 
go to the phone app on the work phone, go to the keypad, dial star seven three and single finger double tap on the call button. But this time you will hear the tone, but you won't get any further information. However, I've used this repeatedly and it will direct your calls back to your work phone. And it's just really that simple and easy. So if you ever have a need for this item, keep this handy and remember, thanks. Very cool. Thank you, Marie. Now, all right, anybody have any questions for Marie? Kathy? Go ahead, Kathy. Will this work on a, a, a house phone? Like, could you put your house phone calls onto your uh, iPhone? Yes, Marie. Yes, I believe you can. And you would actually do the same thing. You would dial the 72 and the number that you want to call it. You can always try it and see if it works. Right. Yeah. That's cool. But the other the other thing is, if you're at home all day and for some reason maybe you forgot to charge your phone overnight and you want to put it on the charger and you want to use your landline, then forward your cell phone calls wow. to your landline. It's really mm. handy. Pat. Go ahead, Pat. Sometimes you have to have the custom calling feature on your home phone to add that service. Okay. Uh, that could be true. I don't know. You'd have to check with your carrier. I have Verizon and I, I hadn't thought about it because it always works for me. All right. Anybody else? Uh, dot. Jody. Okay. Dot then Jody. So this feature, uh, you have to pay extra money for your carry service or um, you know, like, like uh, you know, your T-Mobile or something like that, or just from the iPhone feature? Not that I'm aware of. I don't think there's any extra charge. I know you still want to have landlines. You could do it from one landline to another. And there's no- This charge. is Jake. Hang on, Jake. Go, Jody. So the first number is seven, two, and then, then, and then the phone number, and then the second number to turn it the other way is seven, three. You have to dial star seven two. Star and seven two. Star seven three. Yeah. Okay. Remember thank the you. Star. You have to use the star. Okay. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Thank you. And on the star okay. seven three, you don't have to dial the other number. Just star seven three and double tap the call button. That's all you have to do. All right. Shake. Yeah. yeah I was going to say, as far as like residential, <laughs> excuse me, residential services, uh, most of the time it's included. The call forwarding is included with residential services. But I don't know. I haven't, I haven't had a phone in like a home phone in like 10 years or 15 years, something like that. So this is Hi. Karen. Go ahead, Karen. Um, can you do this with a phone that's not yours? Like if you went out with your husband or whatever and didn't want to take your phone, could you yes. send calls to your yes. husband? Yes, oh, you okay. can. Yep, you can forward it to whatever phone call you could you could forward it if you had a landline a work phone that was at work and you wanted to call send your personal calls to that during the day you can do that. Okay, thank you. All right. This is Shri. Go, Shri. So um, let's say I want to forward my number to someone that mm. doesn't really want to get the calls. Like if I want to just forward all my calls to Sandia. Would the other person be able to <laughs> unblock that call if they're just getting bombarded with calls? I I don't believe so. Okay, thanks. I'll try that. I'll try it out. <laughs> Good Rahil? question. Good question, Sri. <laughs> uh, Liz. Rahil and then Liz. And then gonna keep going. Go. So, why is it a good idea to like forward calls to? somebody's cell phone like a trusted friend or a spouse or a husband or anybody or at, or even at work like why would how come how can well, that become handy 
if you that. and your if you and your partner or husband are going out to dinner and you don't want to carry your phone along, you can forward your calls to their phone and you don't have to carry yours. That's just that easy. So you can have access to your contacts when you're when you have it forwarded or how does that work? No. It just forwards your calls to the other device. Period. Okay, so when somebody calls me, they would call the other device. Right. It would ring on the other device. Thank you. This All is right. Ray. Uh, who, wait, I heard it's Liz. Me. I think Liz had a Liz. Go, Liz. Hi. I used to work for um, the cell phone industry um, back in the day when they didn't have like free long distance on things. So check with your carrier to make sure that it, they don't charge you for that um, call forwarding feature because they, they used to. But I don't know anymore. I don't work them anymore but they used to charge like i don't know 10 cents a minute or something like that because people were doing that to get free long distance but now that long distance is free on everything they probably don't <laughs> charge anymore but but check okay let's go shri thanks liz i was going to give one example like if i know that i'm going to have a pretty bad storm coming here and we have a landline i usually forward the landline to my cell phone Yeah, that's good news. They're, they're, actually, when you start using it, you'll find out there are a lot of times that it, it comes in really handy. I use it a lot. Oh, very cool. Okay, should we okay, probably go you. on and get out of this subject now? <laughs> <laughs> well, very cool. It's like uh, really short and sweet and enjoyed it very much. Okay, now. Who didn't have a turn, we would like to give them priority to ask a question. Just our regular rules, just say your name, wait to be recognized. Who would like to go? This is Karen. Go, Karen. And some, I don't know, not too long ago update. Uh, when you talk, it puts like this pause in with a comma. It was really annoying. Uh, I don't know how to get rid of it. Because it's putting in oh. commas where I don't want there to be commas. <laughs> yes. Battles have been fought over commas at iBug especially. Okay. Uh, who can help Karen about punctuation? That's a new feature in one of our latest iOS. Uh, this is Dot. Go Dot. Uh, what was the issue again? She doesn't want it to automatically put punctuation when she's dictating. I believe uh, this dot, I believe you can do that on the setting. Okay. This is Brad. Brad. I think it's under settings and then general and then keyboard. I believe it's auto punctuation. It's not there. It's under accessibility. I believe I don't believe it's an accessibility feature. I think it's just mainstream. And of course, it works when you dictate, but it's under keyboard in general, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, okay, thank okay. you. I turned it off as soon as it came out because <laughs> it had lots of bugs. Uh -huh. It's Kathy. Go, Kathy. Does the fact that it does this, does that mean that it will let you pause? Because a lot of times when I pause to think for a second, it, it automatically you know ends what I'm saying, or maybe that's just what I'm trying to type a text message, but I'm just, sometimes it doesn't wait for you to take a breath. You know, as soon as you take a breath, it clicks you out of the message you're sending. So if it waits for if the Twitch com is in, I'm wondering if it's giving you more time. Uh, so this is Sonia. This weekend uh, at the Apple workshop, uh, Pete did a description, de de detailed presentation about tricks with dictation. And he mentioned that oh. there is a way to extend the time uh, that, uh, you know, it'll wait for you. So that was oh, like I missed an that. important and that uh, I forgot to mention also. So during uh, so the Apple Workshop is up and posted. So thank you very oh. much, Julie. Uh, so there we covered the phone app, 
how to make a call, how to navigate the keypad, how to navigate a phone tree, because we get that question a lot, you know, how do I type in numbers, you know, to choose different things for my bank or whatever. So we talked about that, talked about merging calls, talked about call waiting, switching between calls. So we had a lot of help from, like I said, Jody, Terrian, Helene, and Miss Delilah. And then Pete did a very fine job on dictation and all the tips and tricks of how to improve your accuracy with dictation. And like I said, that is posted. All right, so hopefully that will help you out, Kathy. Okay, next. Who's next? This is Shri. Go, Shri. So um, this weekend, I was attending a, a, a Zoom call. I won't mention which it was, but it was on Saturday. And uh -huh. there was someone who loves to mute, muted everyone. After uh -huh. this person muted, I could not unmute myself from my phone. It said, the message kept saying, you know, it's, you know, I forgot what the exact verbiage is, but you could not, you're not, you can't mute, unmute yourself right now because somebody blocked it or locked it or whatever. But I could uh -huh. hear other people, you know, unmute and talk, but my phone says that I couldn't unmute myself. Do you know yeah. why that would happen? That's a new feature in Zoom. It's called selective muting. <laughs> selective permanent muting. <laughs> it is a, it is the top of my wish list. <laughs> <laughs> uh, was it you that did it? No. I Who else? <laughs> Who else? Three. I wasn't going to mention your name, but... I write what? to Zoom every day praying. <laughs> But, but no, I couldn't do that. I but I couldn't happened. unmute myself. I was just kind of curious as to, I've never experienced it. It just would not allow me to unmute. That's okay. weird. All right. That's why you were so quiet. Okay. All right. Very good. <laughs> Thank you, Patree. I wonder how that happened. Just Marie. Go, Marie. Could I go back to the punctuation right quick? Sure. It is under, Brad was correct, it's under general keyboard, and it's called smart punctuation, and just turn it off. Oh. Uh. Okay. This is Pete. Oh, Pete. There's also a punctuation setting under the dictation um, menu. I found that out when I did that that uh, demo. So there's another one under dictation that will uh, allow auto punctuation. It's probably off by default. So unless you've gone in and set it on, then it's probably not going to be bothering you. Okay, well, as of right now, something is bothering her. So she's got to turn <laughs> off something. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thanks, Karen. Great question. This Dot. Go, Dot. Yes. Uh, I just update my iOS to 16.5 and dot whatever. Yes, dot uh, whatever. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but it's, I notice it's my phone get hot quicker. I don't oh. know what's going on. I don't uh -huh. know uh, if anyone in this room uh, have the same experience with me, or if you do, uh, what do I, what can I do to minimize the heating up of the phone? Uh, that is a great question. You know, I'm just kidding because I don't know what dot whatever it is either right now. She's... Yeah, that one something. I don't know. No, it's fine. I, it's a good question. Who <laughs> has any help for dot? Yeah. This is Shri. Go, oh, Shri. So, Dot, what kind of phone do you have? iPhone 13. And are you charging it wirelessly or are you charging wired? A wired. Um, I have not experienced this. I know the update was basically doing security patches. Security. So, yeah. I can't anticipate that would cause your phone to, um, to, to heat. So, does it always get hot every time you charge now? Oh, no. It's just... Um... When I'm off the, when I'm not charging it, when I'm not charging it. Yeah. So uh, when I uh, charge it at night, it's, it feels fine. This but is well, Marty. Hang on. Uh, uh, okay, go ahead, Marty. Uh, Dot, when that happens, does your battery go down? Because it happens with my phone and the battery goes down. So mm -hmm. once I use it, and then stop using it that either stops or I power it off and then power it back on because I, I've had that happen. And it, 
if I don't get to my phone soon enough, it actually depletes the battery. Wow. Yeah, I know this. Uh, the battery go down goes down. Um, not not too not too bad, but quicker than usual. Yes. So then power I, your then I, yeah. This is Marty. Power your phone off and then power it back on. I don't know why that's happening. Mm. But and I thought maybe it was my phone, but it's an i it's an iPhone eight, so it's about four or five years old. And I thought maybe that's why it's happening. But this, this is, this is so Liz. Oh, Liz. It depends upon the surface that your phone's on. Because I know if my phone is laying down on the bed for a long period of time, one, well, I'm like listening to a book or, you know, using multiple things on my phone. If it's on the bed, it gets hotter than like if it's on um, the top of a, a surface that is hard, that doesn't have any. Like glass. Generates like heat. Glass. Yeah. That yeah. that'll do it. So I lift mm -hmm. it up, I move it, and then it cools off real fast. I just put it on the fridge real quick. <laughs> this is strange. I did. I did. I put it on the fridge. Okay. In the that's fridge. Cool. So uh, it's cooled down real quick. Yeah. Okay. Go Shree. Yeah. But but thank so, you. Thank you. So Dot, do you have the screen curtain turned on on your phone? Uh, the what? The screen curtain is it turned on? It's always on. Yeah. Okay. And um, I uh, I try the uh, app switcher thing, so I turn most of the apps, uh, close most of the apps. So I don't I never I don't like to leave too many apps on. So I try that, but it's still warm, not 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 hot per se, but it never happened before till now. Okay. So, All right. Good no, question. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. All right. Anybody else? New questions? Some, somebody new that hasn't had a turn? Love to hear from you. Chris? Chris. I downloaded an audio zip archive file into my files app. And then when I move it over to the voice stream reader app, it seems to work okay. And then I go and delete it from the files app. But then, but then I don't know, two, three weeks, when I go to get back into that same file, that audio file into the voice stream reader, it uncompresses it but it doesn't work anymore. I, I can see it and I see the, you know, the size and the hours, but it just doesn't, I can't get it to play. Has anybody else had this problem? All right, anybody have the same problem as Chris? Playing a zipped, well, it's unzipped. This is Wes. Go Wes. The, you know, you just might want to try and delete it and upload it to voice stream, but um, I haven't had that problem. You haven't had the problem. So you want her to delete it and start over again? Delete it from voice stream and, and just re-upload it. Okay, Chris. Chris. Yeah, go ahead. Been there, done that. Still does the same thing. Uh, oh, no. Do, does it work? Are, are you getting it from like a computer or? Go ahead, Chris. I'm, did I get it from a computer? What was that, Wes? Can you do right, it? Right, right, right. How, how, well, what do you, do you have something else you can try the zip file on to unzip it, like a, like a computer with, with a different media player? Or, or even, uh, I'm trying to think what other media players take zip files. This so Chris. Normal, normally it works, Chris? Uh, yeah, it works fine. And then, it just seems, I don't know, maybe two, three weeks later when I go back to listen to that zip archive file within Voice Stream Reader, it's like dead. It's, it's almost like a licensing permission problem. Like, and I, I don't think that's what it is, but it's almost like a licensing expiration type of issue. So then I delete it and I go back and download it again, move it over, expand it, works fine. But then I, maybe two weeks later, I go to, you know, listen to it again and it's dead. But that's Which odd. I... Go ahead, Wes. Uh, I was just going to say, I, I know Winston was pretty, um, he would reply, but I, I think he sold the, the app, so I'm not sure about the new company that bought it, so. but you, you might want to contact them because it could be something wrong with it, you know, the, um, how it decompresses that zip file. Okay, very good. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Wes. All right, anybody else? Who hadn't had a turn? 
would love to hear from you. Rahil? Go ahead, Rahil. Um, how, um, so, so when I am, um, using, uh, my phone in the chest mount, um, how can I get face ID to work? Because with the passcode, I can't find the nine and all that the nine pad to like enter the numbers if it's in the uh, chest harness because it's covering something. Yeah, I would think you're just going to have to, I don't know, anybody using the chest mount? I have never used that. So I guess you have to learn how to navigate that, I don't know, upside down or take it out and do what you need to do. I this is Shree. Go Shree. Have you just tried doing swiping right and swiping left to the number pad? Oh, yeah, like so, one, two, three, four, five, six, you know. Yep. So, just swipe you know. it instead of trying to find the nine, just swipe right. It'll take you to nine. Oh, okay. That's that's what yeah. I've been. And the the face ID doesn't work when it's in there, but, um, but, uh, you know, that's, that's what I was, that's what I'm trying to figure out. Okay. Good question. Thank you. This right. is Wes. Yeah. Go Wes. So if, if you have an Apple Watch, you can use the Apple Watch to unlock your phone too, but you still have to swipe up okay. from the bottom of the phone, and but that's, you... that's a suggestion. All right. Sir, Thank you. How do you use Apple Watch to unlock it? Do you have an Apple Watch? I do have the Ultra, but how do you use it to uh, unlock your phone? Because sometimes it I... works, sometimes it doesn't. I don't remember. Anybody remember? Yeah, I might have to come back. Anybody quickly know how to do that? You have to authorize it somewhere. It's been a while. Yeah, maybe when you come up with it, let me know. Okay, thank you. All right, next. Who this is else? Brad. Go, go, Brad. I thought the Apple Watch feature had to do with when you wear a face mask. And it would see part, as long as you had the watch on and the watch was unlocked and had been, you know, uh, authorized, linked to whatever the phone, that it was that face ID would work when it only saw part of your face. Well, I don't think that's going to help Raheel out in this situation. Uh, so you can't use it to avoid face ID completely. No, I don't believe so. That's not the purpose. Okay. All right. This Sorry, Brad. Sorry, Sorry Rahil. Right phone would come back uh, into play. Okay. All right, Miss Bridget, go for it. Yes, I was late, so maybe you all said this. Um, Saturday, the young man spoke about the AI. They would be doing a, a thing about the AI, but I heard. I think I heard July the ninth. So I was also want to know what platform can I call this number, but would it be on another iBook? No, it'll, it'll, so all of our stuff is always going to be on the same Zoom platform, and that is correct. It'll be on July 9th from 4 to 6 Central Time. Okay, so great. cool. Great Thank question. You. Thank you, Ms. Bridget. Okay. This is Shree. Go Shree. Um, I would like to encourage anyone who's got a question that they're curious to ask that's just bugging them. Are bugging you to find out if ChatGPT or Call Annie can give you the answer. If you do have a question, post it in our iBug Facebook page till June 30th, and then we'll present it at the cafe. All right, cool. Okay, next. Who else? New question, new people, or not new people. Well, I did want to follow up real quick I, in whatsapp i found somewhere i don't know because david mentioned about all of the pictures being together and it was in the whatsapp uh, app itself there is a uh, photo viewer and lo and behold they're all right there so you can just swipe up and down and like right now there's like 250 pictures and videos in this child has only been here four months so, so anyway um so it's pretty cool so they're all there so thank you david okay anybody else 
you question. Scott, is that okay? Uh, yeah, hang on one second. Anybody else before we go to Dot? <laughs> okay, go ahead, Dot. Oh, I'm okay. This is, uh, this question is uh, about the phone app itself. Uh -huh. uh, when I li when I um, select a voicemail I want to listen to and I press play. Uh, I had to put it against my ear in order uh -huh. to hear it. I want to put it down to hear it on the speaker, but right. uh, it just stopped. Yeah. Uh, All right. How, how do, how do I do that? How do yes. I do who can help Shri Who can help Dot with that? It's Marie. Kind of tricky. It doesn't always work. How to Marie. force to be able to see hear the vid the um voicemail on the speaker on, on the speaker this Marie, yeah this Marie. Go Marie, go Marie. i always have had trouble listening to my voicemails in the phone app and it's been a constant problem but i've solved that problem by saying hey siri read my voicemails and she'll say you have one new voicemail and so many saved voicemails and so she mm -hmm. starts reading you the first and you can hear it perfectly it's on this works best with headset if you have headphones on, it really works well, mm -hmm. but you can hear your, and then it'll ask you if you want to delete it or go to the next one or what you want to do with that voicemail. It really works fantastic. All right. You know, uh, thank you. This is that, um, uh -huh. I try, I try that, but it's mo a lot of the time my voicemails is in, uh, my language, which is Vietnamese. So sometimes they don't have transcript for it. Most of the time, oh. there's no transcript for Vietnamese, so it doesn't it's work. It's reading it to you. Mm. It's, I mean, it's speaking whatever they said. Really? This is uh, but it, I think yeah, Sherry doesn't be... do that. Yeah. Sherry doesn't do Vietnamese. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. This is Sri. Uh, uh, what I typically do when I encounter this is I play it once, can't hear it, play it again, it'll play in speaker. Don't ask me why it does it that way, but that's the way I do it. There this is not... this... Yeah, go ahead. Oh, so uh, when you, when Sri, uh, Sri, when you say play it again, you had to put it, your hand, you had to put the phone down before you press the play it again, or? Nope, you just put it away from your face. Uh -huh. Hit the play button. You're not gonna, you're gonna barely hear it. Once it's done, play it again. It'll play in the speaker. Oh, okay. 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 Okay, hey, that'll help a lot of people there. Thank you, Dot. Good question. Thank you. Okay, next. Who else? This is Jody. Oh, Jody. Yeah, I was just looking under settings uh, and I turned off the smart punctuation and then under dictate it says auto punctuation. What is the difference between Smart punctuation yeah, and Pete, auto Pete punctuation. Pete was talking about that. Too, the, the, yeah, I'm not sure what the difference is. Pete this, is right here. This oh, Chris. Go Who else? Go, Chris. Is the auto punctuation where it automatically capitalizes the first letter? Or is that a different one? It might be a different one. Yeah, I think it's auto capitalization. I don't know. Uh, all right, if Pete is here, do you remember the difference between the two different um, punctuation settings that we were talking about earlier? I'm, I'm sorry, I, I didn't hear the part of that. Do I remember the different uh, we, punctuation We mentioned settings? that there are two, two settings for the uh, auto punctuation. Is there a right. difference or? This is Jody. Uh, actually, I just went and checked. Uh, it's under settings, under keyboard, as Brad said, but it's down under dictation. And I don't know that there's another punctuation setting that's unrelated to dictation. So as far as I know, that's the only one. Yeah, this, this is Jody. Go. Yeah, there's there's smart punctuation and then there's auto punctuation. And I turned them both off, but I wonder what auto punctuation is. Okay. The Same. auto is the one under the uh, keep under the uh, dictation the dictate, heading. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Marie. This Marie. Maybe David, then Marie. Um, I think one thing it does is it if you you hit space twice, it does, puts a period in, you know, it starts a new sentence uh, with a capital letter. 
Yeah, this is Jody. That's another setting. That's a different one. Okay, hang on. Okay, anything else, David? Okay, go Marie. Okay, uh, that setting is under accessibility. It's a it's a, it's an accessibility setting. The period, but. I think smart punctuation is something that was added with this latest update. And uh, yes. I think it was Lean asked a question and she has, it's because she's updated to the latest update. And I think that was what was causing all that excess punctuation that was going on because auto punctuation has been there forever. This is Shri. There you go, Shri. Is one geared towards using the keyboard and one is geared towards dictating? Yes. Maybe that's what it is. I think that's what the difference is. That's why they're in different places, maybe. Okay, that's good. We figured that Thank out. Thank you. Okay. Next. Arlene. Go, Miss Arlene. Arlene. Um, if you accidentally delete a text message, is there a trash that you could go to to find it and bring it back? Ah, uh, what a good question. This, this is Pete. Go, Pete. Yeah, at the top of the messages app, Arlene, there's an edit button. And if you double tap on the edit button, then you'll see a uh, retrieve deleted messages option. And that will get it back. I think you've got, what is it, 30 days, I think? Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. On that one, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's just hit that edit video. button and you'll find it. <clears throat> Thank you. Forgot about that. Good job, Pete. Good question. All right. Next. Kathy. Go, Kathy. So I have my new, well, it's not that new anymore, my 14, and I got a new, you know, charger with it and with the, oh. the Apple Watch. So now uh -huh. I wonder. You know, I have all these cords um, from the old phone. So on the one end, it's the same little bitty connector. I forget what you call the, you know, that that connector for the iPhone. At Lightning. the other end, where it used, thank you. At the other end, where it used to be a USB size thing, it's not. It's a smaller thing. So um, I'm wondering. Yeah, can I use, can I still charge my phone on the old um, wire? So I did charge it on the old wire and it did get really hot, but I don't know, like now maybe with people talking about the phone getting hot, maybe that's a whole different issue or maybe it's that I, because I shouldn't use the old chargers. Go, Brad. No, Brad. Old chargers will work just fine. That little charging block is only five watts though. The new um, chargers that came with, what are you talking about? Your new phone, right? USB. Yeah. It's got lightning on one end and USB-C on the other. And it will allow you to use the 20 watt or the 18 uh, watt charger that came with the I, uh, iPhone 11. But Apple sells a 20 watt charger and that will do fast charging. <laughs> it will charge your phone up a lot faster than the old one. Little five oh, okay. watt charger, but if you're plugging it in overnight, you're really not okay. But is it the same thing with the oh no, never mind. <laughs> I was gonna say, is it the same thing with the watch? But the watch has its own. Well, actually, yes, the new watches, the starting with the uh, eight, maybe the seven, I think the seven, they came seven. out, uh, maybe the, the, the seven. They came with a fast charger as well. So the old chargers had a little charging puck on one end and a USB-A on the uh, end that plugged into a charger and starting with the seven, the eight and the ultra, they now have a charging wire that has a USB-C and it will also use that same 20 watt charger to charge faster. Okay. All right, great. Kathy, great question. That kind of leads into my question. We kind of uh, talked about this last week about recommendations for power bank and now we're getting ready for a convention or whatever and I can't find my old one that I had. So I started looking on Amazon and I see all these, you know, and 
uh, the numbers and I I know more is better but then it said I don't know it kept saying something that I didn't know power core or something I was looking for an anchor power bank and I know we I think somebody mentioned last week about something and of course I couldn't find it any any like basic criteria sh that I should look for this is Marty go oh, Marty um I personally have three of them. I have a 26,000 um, milliamp power bank, um, but I have two that AT guy sells, the accessible ones, the, uh -huh. the, the 15,000, which is an older one, and then the 20,000. Um, and that is, you can either set it so that you get a haptic um, notification or beep or haptic and beep and that new one has um you can either charge your power bank with the micro usb port or the u the usb c port is both input and output so you can charge your devices or charge it and then there's a usb a port on there or i guess if you're charging with the older us uh, B chords. Okay. Hey, Shree. Go, Shree. So, Sonny, you have a, what, you, what do you have, an iPhone 13 or 14? 14 Pro Max. Why don't you just get the, um, the either Apple or Anchor's um, battery um, um, bank, and that way you don't have to tether it to the phone. What do you mean? It's, you know, these... Yeah. Apple makes case. it, Anchor makes it, a bunch of the, a few other companies also make it. The charging case. It just basically snaps. It's a little battery that's a magnet that snaps to the back of your phone. Oh, oh, okay. And yeah, that... no, I'm not, I don't want to do that. <laughs> well, I guess you could do it quickly. Okay, go, Brad. Yeah, this basically those numbers, those hey, numbers I'm mean on. how much power the battery has. For example, I have one that's a 20,000 mega whatever it is millo milliwatt amp hour and i can charge my iphone like from essentially dead to full charge it says six times okay then i have another one that it, and but the thing is heavy and it weighs a lot if i carry it around my backpack i bought another one from anchor and it's only 5500 and that's fine because all i and it weighs a lot less it's about the size of a small flashlight and it's nice because all I want to do is when I'm carrying it around with me, charge my iPhone up once, maybe twice during the day if it gets really low. So I don't need to carry that super heavy one. The super heavy one's nice, but it's also got two USB-C ports. So technically, I mean, it's got a lot of power in it. Uh, the other thing to be on the lookout for, a 20,000 watt, 20, watt one, I bought off Amazon and it's from some no-name company in China. And it is unbelievably slow. Whereas the anchor one will take my phone from 20% to 80% in about an hour. So yeah. that's the one I carry around. That's the one I find useful. When we had the big okay. freeze and with days without, you know, power being off and on, um, yeah. I would hook my phone up to that big heavy one. I just leave it hooked up all the time and I ran off it for seven, you know, because it had a lot. But anyway, that's the thing. Okay. All right. This Let's go Marty. to Marty real quick. Go um, ahead, Marty. You will also find, Sonia, because I found looking at these, some of the newer um, power banks also have wireless charging capability, which I think means that you can stick your phone, like you can plug two devices in. And you could also like put your phone on the top of the unit and wireless, uh, wirelessly yeah. charge it. Okay, I I haven't tried that yet. I guess I need to come to the next century or whatever. All this right. Well, thank you all. This is Pete. Thank you. Yes, Pete. Quick. Just wondering, what do you want it for? Do you want it to carry with you that you can charge your phone up once or twice, mm -hmm. or do you want it at home where you've got a day or two? Yeah, when we're going to be. Back? Well, I'm going to be out, you know, like stuff for the conference, I'm not going to yeah. be 
tethered in my room everything is fine but when i'm not at home it's going to be a yeah. different situation yeah all so right. you want a smaller one or a bigger yeah. one yeah yeah or both okay so thank you marie <laughs> thank you marie, marie marie thank you so much and covered a lot of ground today and Ooh. thank you all everybody for all the great questions it is wonderful to have so many new people participating and uh, we appreciate you very much. Remember, we will not, we will not be here next Monday. It's July 4th weekend. So July 3rd, oh. you get the day off. So go and enjoy, celebrate. But, but the movie, we will still have a movie next Friday. We're having a movie this Friday. We already said that's Dead Poet Society. So that's at 8 p.m. Central Time. We also have tomorrow, Tuesday. We're going we're, we're going backwards. So, okay, so Tuesday, tomorrow, Clubhouse from 5 to 6. We've got mini buzz. So if you think of anything about what we talked about today or something totally new, come there tomorrow. Then Mac, Min, Mac and Talk, Mac and Talk at 7 on okay. Zoom. Okay, so that's what's happening and we will be back uh what will that be the 10th july 10th will be our next time back all right so happy fourth of july early i don't see you before that and we are going to let you go right now thank you very Bye -bye. much Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye.